Okay, so we have uh, two guests that will be joining me right now. Um, Mcharo, Mkawasi Mcharo Hall, who is a lecturer at Howard University in the United States. And we also have Johanna LeBlanc, who is a legal analyst, U.S. Foreign Affairs Advisor as well. Both of them just uh, weighing in. They're both in the United States, and it's both been a very busy day for them as well. I hope they both got a chance to vote. Uh, let's start with you, Mkawasi. We tried to speak with you yesterday, and we faced a challenge uh, doing so. Thanks for joining us. Where are you, and what's the latest? Oh, thank you very much. Well, I'm in Baltimore, Washington, D.C. area, and uh, we are watching the elections very closely. Uh, some states are nail-biting just to watch. Uh, we are not sure yet. A lot of them are too close to call, especially the ones that are toss-up states. So um, we are waiting until uh, tomorrow morning. Hopefully, we'll have a better idea of what uh, is going to come out. But we also know that uh, there are states that have uh, issues, you know, court uh, issues that were t about being taken to court uh, concerning not being allowed to count uh, late votes that that uh, come in uh, three days after voting. And these are these are votes that were sent in a lot earlier. So these are, these are things that are going to determine whether some of these toss-up states are really going uh, either red or blue. Uh, we have PA right now, and we don't know yet where that is going to go. Uh, it says it's, it's going to, to Trump right now at 52% and, and, and Biden at 45%. I mean, that's a big one. And um, we're just here. We're sitting. It's been peaceful. That's a good thing. Uh, it's, it's been, been pe peaceful. It's been peaceful. That's a good thing. Let me interrupt you so that I can also bring in uh, Johanna Le LeBlanc, who we've had on this show uh, quite a bit uh, this week, and I know she's been busy doing various interviews. Johanna, any surprises so far? Anything that stood out for you in this uh, highly contested election? Well, thank you so much for having me on again. I appreciate it. Um, uh, but first and foremost, um, all of the, nat well, most of the national polls, rather, have indicated a win um, for, for, for Biden. Uh, now, if this does not happen, what I can tell you is that um, the American system needs to restructure its polling um, structure um, because in 2016, uh, the polls were wrong. Uh, and, and in 2020, if the polls are wrong again, um, that, that, that's very problematic. Uh, but also, uh, the difference between this year and 2016 is that in 2016, we saw that the Democratic Party uh, essentially gave the nomination to Hillary Clinton. And Hillary Clinton was not the preference. Of, of a number of, of, of registered Democrats, especially your progressives and your and, and your, your your liberals and so forth. So when the Democratic Party announced um, Hillary Clinton as the nominee, it alienated a, a, a great sector of the American population. And those folks were so angry that they did not even vote. Uh, but what we're seeing in 2020 is that uh, um, that is not being contested. The nominee is indeed Joe Biden. So we saw that uh, the young people, the, the, um, those between the ages of 18 through 25 mm. are voting or have voted in record numbers. And in, in fact, uh, this year in general, uh, we'll be the, we will have one of the highest voter turnouts um, in a 50 year um, history, if, if not more. So I think this year is slightly different. Um, and, but I think for some people, they were kind of surprised that uh, um, Trump, I mean, Trump um, is, is the winner, the projected winner when it comes to the state of Florida. And for me, honestly, someone who works in the foreign policy space, I am not surprised at all because here you have your Cubans, right? Your Cubans have been very, um, and there's a large Cuban population in Florida, and they've been very content with the Trump administration when it comes to foreign policy vis-a-vis -vis Cuba in the United States. And when you look at the Fidel Castro re regime, the entire um, Republican establishment in general. Um, so this was ex expected. And second, I think the Democrats have had a really hard time attracting Latino voters, in particular men. Uh, jo Joanna, tell me this, for Kenyans following this who are waking up now, it's about uh, 6.30 here, they're going to the office. What, uh, for those who want to follow this, what do the next few hours look like? When might there be some significant results that could tell us which way this will go? What do you as think? My <laughs> as my co-panelists um, articulated perfectly, um, because there's so much litigation in various states uh, about um, these early uh, um, uh, votes and, and, and these um, 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 sent um, um, these um, ballots that were that were cast um, at moment and mailed off. 
um, uh, it may take uh, it may take a few days, but I think tonight what we're going to to find out is at least we will have an idea of who is the projected winner. And as we also know, um, you win the election not just based on popular votes, but also who can who can garner 270 electric votes. Um, Kawasi, you can also add to that, but let me ask you this. Uh, of course, uh, we know that there are a significant number of Kenyans living in the United States. What are some of the issues that are dear to them, even as um, you know, voting continues maybe in some parts of the states and vote counting as well? What do you say are some of the issues for the Kenyan community there that, have, that may have defined this election and the candidates' promises for them? Well, whatever defined the issues around the murder of George Floyd is important very important uh, to Kenyans. It's becoming more so. It wasn't that way, I would say, two elections ago. But uh, with the increasing number of Kenyans and with uh, young African men being also part of realizing that they are part of this black man uh, population, uh, the murder of George Floyd is on the ballot. And, and, and that's become very important to black people. And we are part of the population over here. Uh, we are hoping, or a lot of the people that are voting are hoping that uh, there's going to be a voice that talks about place in, uh, in, in, in either election, re-election. If there's going to be election, there's going to be some kind of trepidation for Kenyans. Because they are, we're talking about something that has risen to the level of needing to find out what we are going to do as a what the U.S. is going to do as a country to a population that has faced so much injustice. That is one. Second thing, of course, is the economy. I think the economy, Kenyans are divided. Whoever it is that is going to drive the economy better is going to be key. We are a people that send money to Kenya, a lot of money to Kenya. And the economy is, is so important to us that we, we want to be tax cleaners. We, we, we do not want most of our money to go to Pakistan. We want to be able to have a dollar or two to be turning home every, every now and then. So, so those, are key, those are the key issues that, uh, that are in front of right now that are valid opinions of. Okay, Mkawasi, thank you for that. For some reason, we can't hear you quite clearly there at the end. Hopefully, we can uh, sort that out. Uh, Joanna, let me bring you back in. Some are, are, are terming, I know it's a bit early, and, and, and both of you have clearly said that, but some are terming it as a, an election surge for President Trump. So far in your analysis, how would you think, how would you describe uh, the situation uh, at this time? And you've raised the issue of what pollsters had to say before the election and why it may be important to look at the polling methods uh, if, if Trump wins. Yes, yes, obviously. So, uh, so I think ultimately we will know, um, we'll have a better idea uh, uh, in a few hours because we know some of the poll, um, some of the, um, uh, polling um, stations, one of the places where folks go and vote, to, um, they're just not closing up. As you know, different parts of the United States, you don't have just one time where all of them close at the same time. So I think in a few hours, you may have a, a better uh, indicator as to where we're, we're heading. Um, but ultimately, because of the various litigation that, that I, I can predict will probably take place um, around these ballots, um, it may take a, 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 a few more days to really have um, the actual numbers. But I think tonight, um, we will have somewhat a, a, of an idea. But what I can tell you is that we're, we're talking about the, the presidential race, but there's also a congressional race that is critical. Because uh, as you know, you have the executive branch and you also have the legislative branch, right? Um, currently, um, the, the Senate is, is under the leadership of, of Mitch McConnell and is ran by the Republicans. Mitch McConnell has just been announced as the winner, as, as get, being reelected in, in his state um, um, to represent the people of, of, of Kentucky. Um, but what I can tell you is, let, let's just say hypothetically Trump were to win and, um, and, and the Republicans were to lose uh, the, the, the Senate. Because the reality is, if the Democrats can flip at least three or four seats in the Senate, it would be a Democrat um, Senate, led Senate. And as a, as a Republican president in a Democrat Senate, Senate, it could be almost impossible for you to achieve some of your agenda. Because we saw what happened with um, President um, Barack Obama um, during his last term in particular. Um, he almost could not get anything done with a Republican-led Senate. So I think we should all also have that discussion. And also on the flip side, as it relates to Kenya, um, the committee that is responsible for foreign policy in the United States Congress, in particular on the House side, is the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Um, now, Engel, who's the chair of the committee, has lost 
um, um, re-election and, um, and someone else will be replacing him who's a Democrat. But also you have the chair of the, 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 the House of, of, of Foreign Affairs, which is probably going to be Gregory Nix, um, a black man who is a member of the Congressional Black Caucus, um, who has uh, represented um, the, the New York District for quite some time. And I think these are relations that the Kenyan government should continue to make to ensure that um, Kenya can continue to promote its bilateral and trade interest in the United States. And I actually have a bit more to ask you about that, but, but let, let's take a, a quick uh, segue and talk to our uh, senior political reporter, Edwin Obuya, who's also in the United States. Actually, he's in Virginia. He's been covering the election from that particular state. Edwin, I trust you can hear me. Uh, good morning from Kenya. I'm not quite sure what time it is there, but what's the latest information you have for us? Yes, uh, good evening, Wahiga Maura. Um, here it is around 10.40 in the evening here in Virginia. And um, as most uh, pundits are saying, it's still too early to call uh, this election. It's um, Joe Biden and uh, Donald Trump and back uh, neck to neck. And so it is too early to call uh, who is going to win the election uh, in a state like Pennsylvania, where uh, Donald Trump is leading at the moment. But Democrats are saying that the, the, he is leading because they have not started counting the votes that were cast earlier. The early voting uh, votes that were cast earlier has not uh, started uh, being counted. And so that's why they are saying that uh, the Republicans are leading in a state like Pennsylvania. But they, they, they are hopeful that they are going to catch up. But um, on, the, on the issue of the Senate, uh, it's, it's uh, closely being monitored that uh, Democrats are almost flipping the Senate, in, uh, the numbers in the Senate. They only need one person, one senator, to flip the numbers. And as, as uh, the, 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 uh, the pundit you are talking to was saying, if uh, the uh, Democrats uh, flip the numbers in the Senate, then it would be, it, it be very difficult for even uh, President Donald Trump to rule, if at all he will win this election. But it's still early days. And uh, we are uh, hoping that in the next three or four hours, we will be knowing how this race is going. But as of now, it's still too early to call uh, if there is Trump or, uh, or uh, Biden who is going to be leading this country. Edwin, I, I want to understand from you how it's been covering a U.S. election. I'm not sure this is your first time, but if it is, briefly tell us what has stood out for you. What's been it the experience the first been time. like? It, mm -hmm. It is the first time, uh, Wahiga, and uh, the, the, the most confusing thing has been the issue to do with the, the electoral college votes. I, 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 I took, it took me a, a long while to understand. People had to, uh, to uh, uh, explain to me what, what really happens, because I was not understanding how I will win a popular vote and lose out on the electoral college vote. But uh, after uh, being explained to the history, the making of the United States as a country, the colonies that were there, and the numbers that are, are associated with the colonies that were formed in the, in the, in, at the start of the, the Republic of the United States, I, I have come to appreciate how they, uh, they, they have come to uh, with the issue of electoral college votes. But uh, I, I was also told that some states are coming up with, with laws to try and um, uh, amend that, because amending the Constitution, I'm told, is, is, a, is an uphill task. And so most of the states want to amend their laws so that w even if you are, you are losing in the state, say like you are in, in Ohio, you are losing, but you are winning the popular vote in the national, in the, at the national level, then some states are, want to change the laws so that whoever wins the national vote will take the electoral college votes in the state. And so that has been one of the most confusing things. And um, also, the, this election, people are just focusing on the presidents, uh, uh, Joe Biden and, uh, and Donald Trump. But we have so many presidents, uh, people who are vying for presidency, and uh, we don't know about them. In, in fact, in, in Virginia here, there are three people on the, um, on the, on the ballot for the presidency. And uh, we, uh, the, 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 the third person, George Jorgensen, I, I never heard about him uh, prior okay. to me coming here. So it's a, it's a bit confusing, but after uh, you appreciate after you go through this experience. Okay, I've got some more questions for other commentators. So before I, I release you, Edwin, um, you're in uh, Virginia now. What time did the voting end there? And uh, what time are they projecting they'll have final results, at least from that uh, state? Uh, at this state, most, most actually here in this state, 
most people voted early and so even today uh, there was no much voting happening in the, in the various polling stations that we walked to we we, we we visited even in washington dc there are there are no much people coming in and voting and so we are expecting that in the next two hours actually we are not going to sleep but in the next two hours we will be knowing what has happened and who has uh, taken this state uh, Virginia and Washington. But here, where I am, mostly people tell me it's a, demo, it's a Democrats. These are Democrats, and so they, we don't expect that uh, Donald Trump will uh, will uh, will take this state, but you, you never know with the elections. You never know with the elections, indeed. Edwin Obuya there. Thanks so much. We'll be talking to you a bit later on uh, as you give us more updates. But let me bring Mkawasi back in. Mkawasi, some of the issues around this election that had been you know, you know, profiled by various media houses were concerns about voter suppression, concerns about unrest in certain parts of the country. Right now, deep into the uh, evening there, are those concerns still valid, would you say? Absolutely, yes. Uh, in American elections, voter suppression is always a valid issue. I hope I'm coming through. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Loud and clear. Good. So, voter suppression, gerrymandering is always a very valid issue in America. This is the biggest difference between American elections and Kenyan elections, is that American elections are rigged before the ballot. And voter suppression is one of the ways. And that has been a big issue at this particular election because the president has been quite vocal and has been involved in uh, moving and pushing towards measures that As count to what suppression um now when it comes to the ballot itself people going to vote it's usually clean you can't rig there so if somebody comes up and says there's going to be a lot of rigging because of uh early voting or absentee voting uh that is not true i have been an elections uh, official uh, through three elections and i have I have been immersed in the scholarship of American elections, and I know it's just, if there's anything like votes that have been spoiled, it's not something that del that's deliberate, and it's not something that people have planned, have schemed to do. You don't have boxes that are found somewhere with stuffed, uh, false stuffed uh, ballots that are going to be counted for someone. Rigging in America happens through voter suppression. This time around, the question is, is the voter suppression that has happened big enough that it's going to affect the turnout? And, and the litigation that is going on is, is, is actually going to be part of uh, determining that question. Uh, we don't know yet. And the hope is that the voter suppression that happens with every election really is going to be minimal enough so that there isn't too much of a question as to whether uh, we should lit litigate the issue or not. Okay, and of course, voter suppression defined as a strategy to influence the outcome of an election by encouraging, yes. discouraging or preventing specific groups from uh, voting. Joanna, um, I want to touch on something you spoke about uh, uh, in your last uh, comment. Uh, the issue of foreign affairs, the, the foreign perspective of the United States, depending on whether it will be another four years for Trump or a four-year term for Biden. How do you foresee the engagement of the states with the rest of the world, with Africa, with Kenya, depending on who wins? Uh, uh, first and foremost, um, during the last um, vice presidential debate, uh, Senator Kamala Harris um, beautifully um, summarized uh, the meaning of foreign policy. And she said, it is relationship with other countries. It is essentially doing and uh, what you say you will do for your allies and your, and your strategic partners. That's all it is. Um, so uh, whether it is a, a, a Trump administration or a Biden administration as a foreign, as a sovereign nation, like for example, in the, in the case of, of Kenya, there are steps that the Kenyan government can take to ensure that uh, its interests are fully protected. For example, there is an embassy here um, in DC, which I walk by all the time and I've had the opportunity to walk inside that embassy and, and folks are so nice. They greet me with Asante Sana. They feed me really good food at the embassy. I, I love it. Uh, but when, the, when the, uh, the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs or the president of Kenya appoints an ambassador to D.C., there's usually a delegation, right? You usually have uh, your minister counselors for politics, uh, for different sectors, right? Uh, but what I'm realizing in, in, in D.C. as a Washingtonian, as someone who works in the foreign policy space, is that uh, 
Um, the reality is that um, King is in its brightest to DC, right? Um, and we know that, that is true um, for so many other countries across the other across the African continent. However, comma, when it is a different system, there's a different structure that you may not be too familiar with. Oftentimes, you need to hire some of the expertise, some of the people who have developed those relationships um, to put you in contact with the relevant key players. Like, for example, as I said earlier, the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee. And in particular, uh, from the Foreign Affairs Committee, you have um, the, 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 the subcommittee that focuses on Africa, which is um, ran by um, Congresswoman Karen Bass. Now, so making sure that um, the embassy or the, the, the Kenyan government has a good, strong relationship with her office and, and, uh, uh, and obviously other allies across Congress, um, the, the, the State Department, um, a lot of the think tanks here in D.C. because they drive foreign policy. It's not uh -huh. just Congress. We're talking about these think tanks. When they write articles about your country, um, that is considered in the foreign policy making making process. So just ensuring that uh, the Kenyan government is fully engaged with the actors on the ground here in the nation's capital to ensure that its interests are always protected, regardless who's the president of the United States. I guess that's, a, that's one way to, to put it. And thank you so much, uh, Joanna LeBlanc, who's a legal analyst and U.S. foreign affairs advisor. Thank you for your time. I know you've had a busy day. And uh, we might still be talking with you uh, a bit later on uh, during the course of the day. And we also had Mkawasim Charo Hall, who's a lecturer at Howard University. Uh, thank you so much to the both of you. And Edwin, I want to wrap up with you uh, before uh, I finally release you. We've seen you reporting from Virginia. Where else, uh, Edwin, might we see you uh, in terms of your coverage uh, for, uh, for Citizen yeah. TV uh, over the coming days? Will you still be in Virginia? <laughs> Yes, most likely I'll still be here, but I'll also be in uh, Washington, D.C. is a nearing is a nearby state, and uh, we'll be moving around from Washington, D.C. and uh, and uh, Virginia just to see how to get a feel of uh, what uh, will be happening, and also be talking to Kenyans uh, to see if uh, their the expectations have been met in these elections. Thank you, thank you so much there. Edwin Obuya, senior political reporter there, a radio citizen in Virginia, in the United States. And he's just given you a brief of what you can expect to see and hear from him and where he might be over the coming days, even as he follows this election. All right. So we're going to switch gears after this break and focus on what's happening here in Kenya. Uh, having given you that perspective, of course, the numbers keep changing in regards to the Electoral College votes in the states and we'll be updating you uh, when significant changes happen. But for now, we want to focus on what's happening in the country. It's a moment of decision for the country in the wake of the rising COVID-19 numbers, a struggling economy, dare I say, a defiant political class as well. And uh, we get into that discussion with some experts after the break. Wilson Socio on SecGen of NAT will be joining us. Janet Ouko, an education expert. Sylvia Kasanga, who's a nominated senator and the chair of the ad hoc committee on the COVID-19 situation in Kenya in Senate. And Muachonda Chibanzi, SecGen KMPDU. I have a chat with them about the way forward for Kenya, what they expect to hear from the president, and so much more. Remember, you can weigh in on this 2242 is the SMS line. Hashtag is daybreak. That discussion on the other side of this break.